Hey everybody, welcome to Barbecue Champs Academy Live. It is so great to be here on this lovely Tuesday afternoon. I see that Steve is relaxed by the tree. So, man, you gotta love that. So we're gonna give uh, folks a few minutes to come in. And um, if you come in, give us a shout. Let us know that you're here. Uh, we'll try to uh, get you put in here as quick as we can and start talking a little bit about some barbecue. I, I tell you one thing, I have sure missed my barbecue family. Um, I cannot wait for us to get out and start cooking again. This is, it's killing me. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, Steve, but I, I just know one thing. It is, they shut, they had the IBCA shut down for two and a half months. And then all of a <laughs> sudden, you know, we got to cook about four or five weekends, I think. And then they said, oh, that's it. Hot spot got in Texas. And IBCA just decided to shut everything down. And man, I tell you what, I'm just, uh, you know, I think we all love it. And I certainly miss uh, all of my barbecue family, all of mm -hmm. our IBCA cookers. And and um, I don't know how uh, how it's with you guys. Yeah, it's uh, so we've had two two comps so far this year go off that, that didn't get canceled. And I tell you what, both of them were packed. Like, you you would have never saw these numbers last year. Not that people didn't want to, but man, they really want to this year. And so yeah. we got out there. And of course this week was the first week that KCBS had their new rules implemented for, you know, social distancing, wear masks. So, you know, we all followed the rules cause we all want these things to keep going. We don't want to give anybody reason to shut them down. So we all followed our rules and wore masks, right. but yeah, but yep. seeing everybody and, and just getting to congregate again, man, it was all, it was all great. Oh, I know it. I know it. I miss my barbecue family. I tell you what, we have a lot of fun getting out and cooking. Thank goodness they haven't shut us down in Louisiana yet. We have a BCA competition coming up in Bunky, Louisiana at this awesome RV park, Gator Grounds RV park. It's so nice. They got a massive water park there. We went to it last year. It was a lot of fun. So all my IBCA cookers, and if y'all are jonesing to go cook somewhere, look up the BCA that's over in uh, Louisiana in Bunky. It's a fun competition. I think she still has a few spots left. So uh, we're still allowing a few people to come in. I still see people popping in. And um, Travis uh, uh, Murray, Murph, Murphy is here. And uh, looks like he may know you. Shout out to you. Go coach. So, yes, sir. Um, as people continue to come in, we're going to let everybody show up. If you are on, certainly let us know. Um and uh, yeah, Mid Atlantic Backyard Barbecue in the house. There you <laughs> yes, go. Sir. So I see my buddy, Mr. Danny Helm with Big Extreme Barbecue. Hey, Danny, how you doing, man? Tell Miss Kay hi. Uh, we're gonna let a few more folks come in here, and then we're gonna kick this show off. Nobody's missed anything. It always seems like there's a few folks that kind of come in just a little bit after we get get started. So we wanted to give everybody just a chance to come in. I steadily steadily see everybody popping in. Uh, and if you come in, uh, let us know, shoot us a comment and, uh, we will, we'll certainly acknowledge it that you're here. We appreciate you being here. And, uh, I want to thank all of my partners for barbecue champs Academy. You know, we got a great, great group of businesses behind us. And i tell you what, it, it's just an honor and a blessing to me to be associated with such good people in the barbecue industry. And, uh, you know, we've got an amazing group of barbecue pit masters, world champion pit masters, and grill masters. we got some of the best in the business, and we've got some great, great uh, businesses that have some incredible rubs and charcoal and stuff like that. I want to give them all a shout out. Danny, as we mentioned just a minute ago with B Extreme Barbecue, uh, B&B Charcoal, appreciate all those guys. I love their lump that I've been cooking with. We've got another one that we've been um, that playing around with. I tell you what, this lumberjack charcoal is some amazing stuff. And uh, we're fixing to do a product review here on this stuff here pretty soon, uh, probably within the next week. That is a really, really good charcoal as well. I can't use, wait to use it. Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop. Man, if you need a place to get hooked up with rubs and sauces and about any accessory they have, Brian Crawford has got an amazing retail store down there. It's uh, Lone Star uh, bbqproshop.com. He also has some amazing uh, rubs uh, as well and some spritzes. Uh, his Crawford, uh, his Crawford barbecue pit stuff. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We got Texas pepper jelly with Craig Sherry 
and Gunnar Wilhelm. Man, I, I tell you, I absolutely love those knives that they sent me. They engraved our logo on one of them, and it was so sweet. It was awesome. So if you're looking for some good knives, I highly recommend those Gunnar Wilhelms. They're nice. Certainly want to talk, Mr. Arkasippi Smoke Live, Mr. John Lindsay, one of our uh, steak cookers. Uh, him and Ronald Burns have a show they do on uh, Monday night at 7.30. They had an amazing show last night and uh, just absolutely love watching. Uh, they, they really kind of tackle the SEA side of things. So, uh, But we've steadily got folks coming in. Um, give us a shout if you come in. Let us know. We got a lot of questions for Steve tonight. And um, we... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about something I was not very familiar with, and that was this KCBS Backyard Barbecue Division. And um, I, I didn't really know a whole lot about it until I was talking to you. And, um, you know, I want you to certainly go in and uh, talk a little bit about that. Man, you got a lot of followers, buddy. I mean, one <laughs> after another, the coach baby. Yeah, Dennis, I mean, can't wait to talk to him. We're going to find out. There's Chris Lemon, um, got uh, Jamie Trader, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Mr. Steve Dotson. How about that? Man, you're getting oh, man. on up there, buddy. So, well, tell you what, uh, they all know that it gets under my skin pretty good. When we, I'm not superstitious, Mike, but I'm a little stitious. Yeah. So, so when we've had the start of the year we've had, I like to try to keep it down, down, but they, yeah. they know it gets at me. So yeah, it ain't going to happen me. now. Nah. So I see Miss uh, Jana Mays is in the house. Certainly glad to have her here. Bill Manning is great, great guy. Just can't beat. Just unbelievable. Glad to have Bill on the show. We got settled. Just people are steadily coming in. We'll certainly give you uh, a shout out as y'all come. Caraway, uh, uh, Ann is here. So, um, and um, who else we got? Shauna or Sean, uh, another West Virginia team that won the SCA at Smoke. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. We got a lot of folks coming in, and um, we certainly don't want to take up too much of your time. I think right now it's a good time to get started. Um, and uh, if you have a question uh, for Steve, um, absolutely uh, let us know. Uh, he's going to probably touch bases on some stuff that I'm not very familiar with. And um, so, Steve, I got a couple questions for you. I know that you compete in the KCBS Backyard Barbecue Division. I want you to get into that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do now is I want to get into a little bit of your background. Sure. Uh, how long have you been cooking? Who was a big influencer in your life to cook? Um, what was uh, your inspiration? And uh, what made you get into uh, to doing competition barbecue? So... Take it away, buddy. Yeah, so I guess when you, when you get down to it, I didn't grow up cooking. Um, we'd occasionally burn some some burgers or hot dogs on the grill, and and the earliest grill that I remember was a gas grill back in the day when they used to put the lava rocks in them. We had one of those, uh -huh. and uh, but we didn't use it often. But my family was all about feeding people. So my my grandmother, the earliest memories I have of, of her. Are, well, both grandmothers are, we'd go to their house either on Sunday or Wednesday night and we'd have a meal and either of them, it didn't matter when you showed up. The first thing they were going to do was feed you something. So yeah. you might as well show up hungry cause you're going to eat anyways. Right. But that's just sort of how we took care of each other. And you know, I, I appreciate that. And the older I am, the more fondly I look back on that, but that's sort of, that's sort of what food is to me. And that's, that kind of melds really well with barbecue. So the barbecue you know, I've always loved to eat barbecue, but here in West Virginia, we're not exactly what you'd call a hotbed for good barbecue, Mike. Uh, you know, I got my first taste for ribs just on, you know, some decent Texas Roadhouse ribs that happened to be cooked fall off the bone that night. But, you know, it got that flavor. It got, you know, they hit it about right. I wasn't chewing them off the bones, and I got the idea of what it could be. And so right. from that point on, anytime we'd go anywhere out of state or whatever, you know, my dad and I both, we'd – uh we'd all be looking for the barbecue spot, the spot we can go get some good baby back ribs. And it was spare ribs hadn't even, they're not around here really. I mean, they are, but not in a right. restaurant setting. You know what I mean? Right. So you, you go on a little bit, we get to college, me and my buddies decide, you know, once a week, we're going to get everybody together at the house. We're going to have a Sunday dinner and each one of us is going to take turns man in the grill. Now, again, at this time we didn't know what we were doing. 
Uh, so, so luckily we were, we were rolling a gas grill because we would never, we'd never had dinner in time if we were trying to do charcoal back then. Cause we were just some, some kids, you know, but we try to do a little of this. Now I remember I tried to do barbecue chicken legs, something that you or I today, you know, it's no, no problem. We'd have that done in under an hour. I swear, Mike, I think I cooked those things for like three hours and I'm <laughs> still not sure I got them to a safe temperature. <laughs> I mean, and I, I had dunked them in sauce from the get go. So they burn on the, uh, it was not the best experiment, but you know, that's sort of how we got rolling. You go a little bit further in life. I had a, my first baby and uh, she had some, some medical issues. So from where I used to ride motorcycles and play golf, I found myself spending a lot more time at home. Right. And it was around that time that I feel like everybody in my generation of barbecuers is going to say, I ran across barbecue pitmasters on TV. Right. And to that point, I had no idea that competition barbecue was ever even a thing. But all through high school, I was, you know, as a varsity athlete, played intramural ball in, in college. I love to compete. You know, if we're doing something in my head, I'm going to make a game out of it. We're going to go at it whether we want to or not. Right. But. The thing about pitmasters was at first I wasn't really even concerned about the competition side. What I was concerned with was a man on there named Johnny Trigg. They kept calling the Godfather of Ribs. And I went, well, if that's the Godfather of Ribs, surely I can figure out from watching this TV show what he's putting on there. And I can make these because there is no place around me anymore that sells ribs. So about 2016, I had a Weber kettle. I stumbled across a website called AmazingRibs.com where they talked about two zone fires and put everything together and I mean I made a rack of ribs and, and they weren't terrible Mike the tenderness was off but they tasted like barbecue ribs should taste to me and from that point I got close enough that it became a thing we just kept going forward so I, I did ribs so I said okay let's try pork butt and then for some reason I decided to try a turkey breast that turned out horribly as well again <laughs> poultry is just it's tricky yeah but about 2017 I realized we had one KCBS barbecue competition in our state and it was literally 30 minutes away from me. Right now. I didn't find out about it till the weekend of, but once I found out about it, I told my brother, cause my brother's actually a better cook than I am from a well-rounded culinary thing. He's, right. he's traveled the world a little bit. He's seen a lot of things and he's, he's a good cook. Right. So I told him, I said, Johnny, you're going to help me. You're going to help me compete in this next year. He looked at me funny. I was like, Oh yeah, we're going to go compete in a barbecue contest. And at the time, like you right now, I had no idea that there was a backyard. I didn't know how much it cost. I just knew I wanted to go be a part of this because I'd watched – by this time, I'd watched all the episodes of Pitmaster yeah. several times. Yeah. You know, it's it's just one of those things. And I'd moved to a new house, and, and uh, I was up late one night, and I was watching some some competition stuff. And I decided, you know what, if I'm going to go compete this year – I'm going to start a YouTube channel too. And I'm going to document the process. No idea where that idea came from, but for some reason I got that wild hair and we're stuck with it. And that was about two and a half years ago now. And we still put out YouTube stuff to this day, but, uh, that's a different story. Going back with, with competing. I had some buddies that I developed in starting this YouTube channel that did compete and they competed backyard. So I, I called them up and I said, Tell me a little bit about this backyard. What is this? And essentially, all the KCBS backyard competition is, is it's a lower sanctioning fee. So the entry fee is lower. Okay. You only cook, well, you're only required to cook two meats. Uh, then that is chicken and ribs. Now, a KCBS organizer can decide to have a backyard that's a three meat, chicken, rib, and pork. Right. And count it towards the grand. Or they can have a pork ancillary if they want, so it doesn't count towards the grand. But the main staple is... Chicken and ribs. Chicken and so ribs. you don't need as much of a cooker. Right. You know, you, you roll out there. My first competition, I rolled out there with a Weber Smoky Mountain and a 26-inch Weber kettle. Right. You know, uh, stuff I could throw in the back of the car, and I got there. Right. Uh, the lower entry fee is fantastic. And, and honestly, Mike, that's the main reason why I've stayed backyard, because I want to go pro. Uh, you know, guys like us, we want to compete at that highest level of competition. That's what makes it fun. Right. But by staying in the backyard with lower entry fee, I don't have to buy as much meat. I don't have to buy any Wagyu briskets. I can, I can roll 10 of these a year where, you know, yeah. I'd have a hard time justifying to myself and a wife rolling more than three or so pro competitions. And 
and as a competitor yourself, you know that yeah. one of the ways you get better is you go out there and you do it. Right. So I was sort of back and forth on on if we should go pro or not. But we registered for backyard. We went in. We ended up at that first competition. We took a second place chicken with a 174 chicken, which is a pretty good score. Right. Uh, we had some terrible ribs. I've, I'll tell you some stories about some ribs later, but it's always been my <laughs> downfall. But we ended up taking third overall. And we took third overall to a team that granted, and their name was Brother Uncle Barbecue. And they had been running the the backyard circuit in the mid-Atlantic region. Like anybody who, who competed backyard, if Brother Uncle showed up, you knew – you better pack a lunch because it was going to be a long day. Right. Um, but again, sort of those competitive juices, I wanted another shot. I lost to him by 2.2 points as the new kid on the block. So I wanted another shot. So, you know, being, being the guy I am, I went on his Facebook page because he had his list of his contests he was going to. And I scrolled down and I was looking. I said, well, I think I could probably get another one in October maybe. And lo and behold, he had the Jack Daniel Shade Tree wrote down there. So I sent him a message. I said, hey, what's, what's this about the Jack Daniels? How do you qualify for this? And he told me, he said, well, it's, it's just a lottery draw for the backyard guys, but it's a big deal. They take 42 teams. You essentially put your name in the hat. They'll draw you from all around the country, but you get your chance to compete side by side with the pros at the Jack in their backyard oh, wow. division. Wow. And, uh, you know, probably, probably the worst time in my barbecue career to actually hit on it. But we drew that Jack Daniel shade tree. So for our second ever competition, we went chasing brother uncle down there from the <laughs> mid Atlantic region to try yeah. to put a whooping on him. Long story short, they took fourth in that contest, and we took twelfth in our second ever KCBS backyard contest in the team full of guys from Bama. Which, when you talk about backyard KCBS, Alabama is the hot spot of it. Right. It's not necessarily really popular everywhere else in the country, but all it takes is is a group of of competitors that that make it that way and and that's actually what we've got to I, a lot of these guys that you've popped up in that bottom screen mike are my fellow backyarders from the mid-atlantic region and what we've done you. between last year and this year is we've created a, a group of probably 30 guy, 30 teams right uh, guys there's, there's some ladies out there uh 30 teams that are just you know they're a stone cold murder squad if you see them show up and that's what this last weekend was we had 30 registered. I think three teams had to drop out for some reason. But it was it was a strong enough field that when you went in there, it, you knew it was anybody's game. Right. Uh, you know, it's – and that's what our backyard has become. Our backyard has become more than just a, a test bed, which that's what a lot of people use it as is, hey, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do one backyard so I can see what it's like, and then I'll go pro. Right. What we have now is you can go pro if you want to go pro, but you don't need to for that comp that competitiveness we've got guys in the backyard that if they would step up and go pro they're going to mess up somebody's day in chicken and ribs because that's how we can score right so it's you know it's it's something that's became uh sort of a personal mission of, of mine and some of the other guys that i've seen pop up here to, to grow this thing and and to uh Stick make it together exactly and yeah. at the end of the day the more the backyard grows eventually those guys are going to go up to pro uh -huh. so it's going to be how we grow this sport and that's something that i think all of us as competitors are trying to contribute to is the growth of this sport so you know we we keep it super inclusive you know if you're a mid-atlantic backyard barbecuer we've got a facebook group where you know we aggregate all the information if you need help we'll give you help and if you're looking try to find the contest we do that kind of thing we've we've got our own website where we track our we have an unsanctioned team of the year points race just because we wanted the side bet to see who's the best so you know it was 20 dollar buy-in you we've got um We've got a guy who's over top of it who says, you know, yay, verily, these competitions will count for the points race, and and uh, we're going after each other right now. Right, right. You know, that's a that's a really good thing that you're doing. It allows you to grow into it. And, you know, uh, Aaron Leslie just put on here great advice. You know, it is. I mean, you know, barbecue, is it's tough, and, that, and that's kind of one of the thoughts. You know, I'm sitting here listening to some of the things you're saying. It's kind of why – you know, my vision was with Barbecue Champs Academy to to help the people to, to start to take up that next level. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's in and, and like Aaron said, backyard is a great start to being consistent. You, you get into that and you got it and you got it going on. And like I said, I didn't really know a whole lot about this backyard barbecue division uh, until you said something about that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, that's a 
that's a that's a pretty neat deal. And um, I like that y'all you've got the the brotherhood. You know, we like to call it our barbecue family. Mm-hmm. You can you can build off of that. You can get where you think you're at that level. And okay, I want to try to go on and step up to the next level. It doesn't mean that you have to go full time doing that. You can jump up there. I'm assuming mm-hmm. you can cook one or two. Come back. No, I, so it does allow you that opportunity. And I see what you're saying. You know, everybody can't go out and spend five hundred dollars at a competition. I like what you're saying. I can only go cook two meats, chicken and and ribs, probably the two cheapest meats that there is. Mm-hmm. I don't have to have ten thousand dollar cookers. I can cook on a, a a WSM and a kettle, and I can go compete and have some fun. You and, got it. And uh, you know, we all start in the backyard. Here it is, right here. We all start in the backyard, and that's that's what it is. You know, you took. You know, I was listening to your story about you know growing up and cooking. You know, and I keep saying on this show, you know, barbecue is about family. It's about friends. It's about building relationships. I've said that over and over, and I'll always say that. I've got some of the greatest barbecue friends that I never would have met these people had it not been for barbecue and getting mm-hmm. out there and hanging out with them. Yep. And uh, and a lot of them are just there to help you more and more and more and more. So, um, yep. anyway, yeah, that- I, I, I just think that's the biggest thing, you know, yep. Um uh, and I would, and like this guy, Dennis says, you know, need to get more KCBS organizers on board for the backyard. That, if you want to grow the sport, if you're an organizer and you want to grow the sport, which we're all trying our best to grow this sport, then this is how it's done. Mm-hmm. You know, get it, get a division opened up. Quit just always pandering to the big pros. Yeah, they're going to come. You don't have to worry about that. But if you want to grow the sport, Grow it in the grassroots. Grow it from within, because you got a whole lot more cookers out there that can cook the backyard. And when they get good enough, and they feel like that they've got a good game, like you said, you got to, Aaron, you got to start somewhere. I was fixing to say that, Aaron. We all got to start somewhere, and that's the perfect time to be able to step up Mm -hmm. and do something like that. So, um, I don't know. I I think that's a that's a fascinating story, and uh, it, it really is. And and, and the point system and everything else is the same as yep. the as the full blown pros still yes, get sir. on the same scoring system. Okay, and that's, that's pretty- always a, a big point of contention. Depending on some some folks will try to tell you that well they judge you more soft because your backyard. Well, I'm here to tell you KCBS only puts out one judging program. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the same judges judging the same way they've been taught. It's right. It's it's a true accurate way to, to sort of gauge where you're at, and that's yeah. exactly what it's for. Right, right. Well, that's pretty neat because you can go in and you can if, if you think you cook some good backyard barbecue, um, you can go in and, and and have a place to start. Mm-hmm. And um, um, I just I just think that's that's a, a good way to go about doing yeah. it. So, yep. and sanctioning fees are or entry fees are roughly that of. Um, you know, give or take, they're going to be somewhere between 125 to 175. So about what you'd pay for an SCA. You know, I've been to several backyard only contests where folks roll in the morning of. Mm-hmm. So it's it can it can be a one day contest if you need it to be. Right now we a bunch of these guys that are commenting here. I'm seeing these yeah, guys are party animals. Head. Yeah, well here's one guy, Travis. You know, we have an organizer running a backyard double coming up. Hopefully that shows our other organizations that, you know, the backyard following. Uh, Aaron's got a, a question. Can I start in the backyard comps first? So can you start there and, and go up or? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. Or, you so, can. The, the KCBS rules define a backyarder as as long as you have never been a on a professional team that granted or reserve granted a, a contest. As long as you've cooked less than three pros this year, you can go back right now. Okay. And as long as you've cooked less than, or if that's not the case, as long as you cooked less than 12 overall, you can still go back to the backyard. So there's always options to come back to the backyard. Now, there are contests uh, like the Jack Shade Tree, for example. Their rule, because they're a little bit different, it's their rule. Uh, specifically, you can't have competed pro in any sanctioning organization, but that's that specific contest. As far as KCBS goes, there's plenty. Of, if you jumped up and you decide, well, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I need a little more practice. Come back to the backyard. We're here for you. Right. Okay. So he's asking grand or reserve a KCBS. Yeah. If you've been a part of a team that re- granted or reserved, I don't think you can come back to the backyard. Okay. Okay. Uh, a KCBS that, Master Series for that year, 
are once you've been a part of a team and you've got a grand or reserve, they won't let you come back. I'm pretty sure it's once you've been a part of the team. Part of the now, team. there okay. is an appeals process. So if, if, you know, if I was just the dishwasher, and I just happened to be there. Right. You know, you can write to KCBS and ask for permission and, and they'll grant it to you usually. But, right. Um, right. But yeah, there is right. a process. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty fascinating. Mm-hmm. Well, how long have you been cooking? Well, so I started cooking KCBS. My first contest was June of 2018. Okay. And just this last weekend, we got in our 10th competition that we've so ever you, competed you had, in. How had you done prior up till, and this is your first comp- first two competitions you've done this year. How had you done prior? I mean, I said you had a couple of good spots. Would yeah. you struggle we, a little bit? We were always, so we were, we were one of the, <laughs> so a little bit of history, I guess. Back to that brother-uncle team. When they left in 2018, there were several of us who didn't know about each other that had decided we were going to be the next brother uncle and run the circuit. Well, we all sort of realized that we all kind of had our own. So I got, I had one grand in 2019, but I spent a lot of time, uh, third place overall. I think I had one reserve. Um, I had a lot of third place overalls, but we all sort of had one grand and then the other guys would get it. We didn't realize we were there. And then at the end of last year, we sort of realized we were all there. So I was, I was upper mid pack. I guess right. because we were still growing the backyard. The comps weren't that big. The one I granted, I think, was only eleven teams. Um, but yeah, it was. I was doing good, but I wasn't as good as I wanted to be. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Well, I know that you had reached out to us and was asking about Barbecue Champs Academy mm-hmm. and whose class that that you thought would help you the best for IBC or for KCBS. And at that time, um, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of KCBS cookers. And um, one of the best ones that we thought would probably help you in your area was Corey Mike's. Yeah. And I know you bought Corey Mike's class at the very end of last year. I know you never really got a chance to do anything with it. And um, you had posted here just a few weeks ago something about a grand champion and i was like wow <laughs> okay so what happened here and um i saw some of the, the food that you turned out uh let me uh let's go over here and let's talk a little bit about um let's talk a little bit about this so you hit a grand champion mm-hmm. yes and sir. that was your first one of this year rolling right out the gate Yes, sir. And then you went to your next competition and got a reserve grand champion on your first two after taking Corey Mike's class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that first one specifically was very important for two reasons. One, it was the very first contest in our, our own Team of the Year points race that we were doing. So it's important to come out the gate strong, right? Right. But also, this year, KCBS is having the very first Backyard World Championship Invitational in Kansas City. And the way you qualified was you had to have a first place category call in either chicken or ribs from January 1 of 2019 until July 31st of this year. So here's the fun story. I had a first place category call in June of 2019. However, I was not a KCBS member, so it didn't count. So I knew coming into this year I had four chances to qualify, and I wanted to get out the way early. So at that first contest at um delta pennsylvania the york county barbecue contest we had 21 backyard teams and like i said just of the field i think 10 or 11 of them had had grand championships at some point in their career and i was going in i told my brother after the fact because i didn't want to say anything during the cook because it, it was going well right but it was a tall ask we wanted a grand championship and we wanted the first place category call and i'll be darned if we didn't post up our highest chicken score ever at like a 176 point something got our first place right. category call, got our invitation to Kansas city. But then we also posted up our highest ever rib score. Wow. It was at a 168, but we won our table as well, which is a different thing with KCBS. We can talk about too. Right. Ended up grading that with the highest score I'd ever posted up by like, I think 13 points at wow. a, a 340. Ah, it was either 344 or 346. I don't remember at this point. I think right. it was a 344, but I'd never touched 340 before. It was always, I was always about a 330-er. 
Right. And we just – ribs were always my Achilles heel. I couldn't score ribs higher than a 164. Right. Uh, and often lower than that. I just couldn't do it. So, man, I ran I, – I ran straight Corey Mike's ribs. Just didn't even question it. I figured out how – because, of course, he cooks on it. A jambo and right. and I don't I don't cook on a jambo I cook on a big old square right she's like but, a can yep but we kind of tell you how to go about cooking those absolutely if you are cooking on a on a kettle or a drum or whatever so to try to give you some tips of how to do them so I guess you exactly. got to figure it out yeah yep yeah actually I was going to mention that you that's one great thing about those classes and I've had a lot of people ask me about these classes since you know I've I've been talking about that I took one is you know, I don't I don't run a stick burner for the sake of consistency. Right now, for me, it's easier to run my can, and I run it off a, of a fan. I can run it naturally aspirated, but in a contest, it's just one less thing I got to worry about if I run it off of a fan. And you know, it was about me figuring out. You know, Corey says he likes to run his at this. What's a comparable thing on mine that that cooks about the same time frame? And and so. I built this new cooker this winter, and I spent about eight weeks up to this contest figuring out how to get Corey's, how to get my ribs to look like Corey's did when they came off there. Right. And uh, well, there they are. Know, there they are. Yeah. And they actually, uh, and this last you... weekend, we scored an even higher rib score with that recipe. Really? Wow. Yes, sir. I tell you what, man, that is that is a beautiful box of ribs, a gorgeous looking box for some <laughs> pork butt. And that mm-hmm. chicken, that looks like Corey Mike's dead gum chicken right there. That is, yeah. that is absolutely just beautiful. I mean, all, all three of those boxes look great, man. Yeah, I, know we were... you, I know you got to be happy with that. So, Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's impressive. So, so I know we, we really talk a lot about that with, with Barbecue Champs Academy and how these classes have helped. Mm-hmm. I mean – the, the we always say it's where the rubber meets the road it, it's it's where the you know the proof's in the pudding and here you are you come out first competition being laid off for six months seven months and you go in you take Corey's class you perfect it you learn how to cook it and i like mm-hmm. what you said i took the time to figure out to how to make my ribs look like his and uh man to roll out there and do that um uh, congratulations you know you. I, I know that's got to make you feel good that you go off and you have a a grand and then you was you i know you don't like to, you didn't want to say a whole lot about <laughs> it but you got a reserve grand champion yes sir and you said you know he you, your chicken had the, like the lowest score ever and you got on what we we all know it it's called the table of death yeah yeah so and it's it's important in, in case you be, like i know i i I, bleh, I know ibca is different but in kcbs land yeah for folks that don't know, the way the judging works is you get six judges at a table and each judge gets six pieces to sample. And so they try to make it as, as even as they can, but it's, you're never going to land on the same table. So that's how they try to even it out as well. But there sometimes are tables that score higher than others or lower than others. So, you know, I'm not here to, to complain about the system. It is what it is. It's, it's great for what it is. It's all you can do. But I say that to say, as a KCBS competitor, the one thing that you can sort of hope for and the thing that I try to gauge the most on is, did I win my table? You know, of the of the six guys, did I come out as the highest scoring guy there? And and actually so far in in 2020, out of six, five tables we've hit, we've won every single one of them. Oh, wow. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. So you got on the table of death and then that, with a low chicken score, had you have not got on the table of death, you perhaps would have got back to back GCs. Maybe. I mean, you know, the how frog had po- wings and all that, but yeah. How many points away was you from the grand from your reserve? I was, I was four away or, from the grand. Um, yeah. So I was four points behind the grand champion, but my, I can tell you that my average chicken score was four points higher. And then what I had scored earlier in the year was higher than that. So, wow. You know, oh, well, you it's know. one of those things we're blessed to reserve it, but you know, yeah, we'll just keep trying. We'll try to make it even better for next time. Yeah. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Yeah. Uh, 
Steve has a nice big lead in first place in the Middle Atlantic Pioneer Backyard Team of the Year points. Congratulations. So, yeah, that's <laughs> uh, that's pretty awesome right there. So, um, yeah, Jamie said, I think I was on the same table for chicken as you. I mean, you know, it's uh, the table of death. Yeah, you're right, Dan. The table of death is a killer <laughs> when you get on it. It really does beat you up, and you like going, golly, man, really? So... Did, what did you find most that helped you with Corey's class? Technique, recipes? I mean, t I thought Corey was very technical in his class. He is just yeah. a master of technician. And um, what, did, what helped you the most? Was it the technique? Was it, was it the selection? Was it the or, – or all of it? I mean, the way he puts it together – did you have one or two things that just really, really stood out? So if I had to pick one or two things, the, the technical aspect of it was important to me because I'm very, you know, if I'm going to put something on something, I need to know exactly how much it was because if it's not a repeatable process, it can't right. help me every time. But one of the biggest things for me was, well, there, there were a few techniques that he had in there that I can't I, talk I, about. I, I really like them. Yeah, yeah. I really yeah. like those. But the other thing was how he, sh how you guys showed and how he defined the tenderness that he was looking for, for ribs, because that's something I had been trying to guess at all of 2019. I was chasing my tail the whole time. Right. And you guys defined it and I did it. And then even after I tried it a few times, it wasn't quite right. So I, I went to Corey through, you know, the forums and whatnot. Right. I went to Corey through Facebook and I said, Hey, you know, this is what happened to me. It, I don't think it's just like you're talking about. And this is what I'm cooking on. You got any ideas? And he said, yeah, so this is what I recommend. So I started doing that, and boom. I'm telling you, I've the time after I talked to Corey, I made the most perfect rack of ribs I've ever made. I haven't even duplicated those in the contest yet. But I think what it was is a little bit of over-practicing. It start thinking if a little bit of something's good, a lot's better. So I've yeah. been back dialing it back. So a at York, the first contest we granted, right. with, we took a 168 and fifth place rib. I was like, this isn't quite right. So I went back and looked at my notes after in pictures, because I always take pictures of every practice. Right. right after I talked to Corey, and I could see what I was doing, I said, okay, well, I'm going to take this back. So I made that change, just dialed it back a little bit, and we put up a 173 rib at, wow. um, and took second place in ribs. And, you know, if we wouldn't have done that, there's a good chance we wouldn't have got our name called at all. Right, uh, right. Last weekend, but yeah. you know, you know that's that's the key. That's the one thing that we hear over and over. People love how we just go in, and I'm constantly asking him questions. I'm digging that information out of him, and you have that video where you can see exactly how much rub he's putting on it, exactly how he goes about doing his injections and everything else. And to me, that's the secret. I mean, you go to an in-person class. And you get to see it one time. And that one time, man, you even if you took like the best of the best notes and you did all that, it is so hard to remember and to duplicate it. Mm -hmm. And with the videos, you can just keep going back and watching them over and over and over. And, and I think the success of, of so many people, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many people that have taken our classes have had grand champions i have literally lost count at this point yep and it's a good feeling to know that people can come in and take a class learn the techniques and if they just implement them and don't try to overthink it yep and don't try to don't try to add or add to don't do it. get it to where <laughs> it's perfected and then it's once you get that if you want to tweak it a little bit there um you know it, it's that's the point you know you, you got to stay on the dishes like Danny said here. You got the details, man. When you have the details there, you got to stick with them details mm -hmm. and, and don't get off base. You know, once you perfect it, once you got it where I'm just rolling this thing every time I'm doing great and you don't, and you don't seem like you can get any higher, then that's when you might make a little tweak here or there. So, uh, yeah, it says you only lost first place rib by six tenths of a point. That yes, dumb, man, that's, that's close. You it was know, close. Yep. That's close. Hey, I like it. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, that's the kiss yep. method. And yep. uh, that's that's so, so important. Um, and you bring up a great point about those those classes. I haven't taken a single note from Corey's classes. 
But if you go back and look in your logs, I've watched them about 20 times for each yep. one. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've I've seen every time you come, I was like, he's still looking. <laughs> he's still looking. And that's the great thing. You can continue to go back in, and you can look at them and see. I mean, um, you know, one one of the things with Corey, I mean, he is, his class, I'm going to go pop over there real quick um, at Corey's page. But i tell you what, Corey is – you know, his dad, I, a lot of people may not know, Danny Mikes is, man, that guy, I'm surprised he's not in the KCBS Hall of Fame. You know, he has won more competitions. I think when they were down there filming, I think it was in 1997, 1999, somewhere, he told me he went to like 19, 22 competitions or something and had 19 grand champions in that one year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Corey just kind of rolls and does his own thing. I asked Danny, I said, you know, Danny, I said, do you, do you help him? And he said, I'm just here to advise him. You know, he'll ask me, what do you think? You know, what would you, you know, he said he just kind of does his own stuff. You know, he cooked with me for years when I was cooking, when he was growing up, but he said he wanted to do his own thing. And, um, you know, here's his all access class, brisket, mm -hmm. ribs, pork, butt, chicken. You can get all four classes for five ninety nine. Uh, I think what you really liked was this right here. Get access oh, yeah. to a private Facebook page where mm -hmm. you can ask questions anytime. And I tell you what, all of these guys are just, they want to help you. You know, we all took a, a, a liking to this to, we want to help the cookers get out there and compete and do well. I look at that chicken and I look at the chicken that you did and man, I mean, it looks like picture perfect. So, but this was the boxes that Corey shot for that day. Uh, mm -hmm. pork butt was amazing. Brisket, one of the best briskets I've had. Um, Corey's, Corey's a good cook. He really is. And, um, um, Anybody can can gain from any of these guys. We have so many pit masters to choose from. You're doing very good with Corey's. But if we go look at a lineup, how about Robbie Royal? You know, barbecue pit master winner. Uh, Joey Smith, Mark Lambert, a six-time world champion. Um, King of pork. Sterling Smith, another IBC, or KCBS cooker. Lee Hickel was our IBCA cooker of the year last year. This past year, he, he runnered up. Craig Sherry, David Bosca. You talk about a big name in the KCBS. The American Royal runner-up, reserve grand champion last year. And uh, turned right around uh, and, and six or eight weeks later, went to the, the Jack and grand champion, you know, the Jack. Mm -hmm. Won his uh, second world champion. So, you know, the yep. great thing is you got plenty of classes to choose from. Uh, you can go in, you can take a class, and like you said, you can you can watch them anytime that you want, and, and I think that's what really helps. So uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming on and, and kind of telling us just how they have helped you and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how you do for the rest of the year. You're going to have to keep us informed for sure. And yeah. if you wrap up the points, Chase, it looks like y'all are in some <laughs> kind of little deal. You're leading the point. I want to have you back on here and, and just seeing how your techniques are. Yeah, sure. Well, we'll be at that double here in, uh, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. So, you know. So how's that work? Is it a, a, a Saturday, Sunday cook? Yeah. Okay. Yep. This is, so I know there have been a, at least a couple Backyard doubles down in Alabama. I don't know how often they happen, but, but this is our first one ever on the East Coast. So we're coming out and, you know, I get to see what the gauntlet's like. And yeah. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I bet. I mean, after having a grand and a reserve, I mean, I bet you're just stoked. So, <laughs> if, hey, if anybody's got any questions out there uh, for Steve uh, or me for barbecue champs or anything, you know, certainly uh, uh, certainly let me know. Uh, shoot us a question out. I mean, this is it's, it's pretty neat to uh, – uh, to be able to um, um, talk to somebody that's in this different type division than what we cook in. And, you know, I'm kind of curious to see some of my IBCA cookers. You know, occasionally we see some some uh, IBCA cook, you know, KCBS cookers, cooks around here in Texas and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, they may be like, yeah, I really don't know if I really want to go over there and jump over in that. But, hey, with this backyard division stuff, this may be something. Well, hey, you know what? I can go over there and get my feet wet cook a couple competitions and uh, just see, you know, what it's like and what it's about. So yep. if anybody's got any questions for Steve, man, now's the time to, to fire them off. Uh, let us know. And, um, you know, 
it, it's it's just neat to see how the KCBS has taken the backyard cooker and allowing them to come in and be able to compete and still feel like you're part of it. You know, you're there with the big That's guys. That's a big thing. That to yeah. me makes it a lot. That's a, that's a huge deal. You know, I made the statement at one point in time last year that occasionally at a, at a big comp, it just kind of felt like we were the lawn ornaments for the pros because you know, there'd be a few of us. There'd be nine to 11 of us. But now this year, I mean, we're there and we're bringing the party. And uh, I, this last weekend, at least six or eight of the backyarders, uh, a lot of them have actually been commenting on this. You know, they were there Thursday night. They were ready to throw down. They were ready to get it together. And and, and then they stayed Saturday night, too, to, to be a little more wild. So it's, you know, we're bringing the event. It's it's a good time. Right. Okay, so we got a few questions. Uh, Aaron's asking, I've only cooked seven KCB events, so can I cook the backyard competition with no worries of being labeled? Yes, as long as you've cooked less than three professional and, – and disclaimer here, uh, I'm not a KCBS rep, so you might want to check the rules to be 100% sure, but I'm very certain that as long as you've cooked three or less events this year, you can go straight back to backyard. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> is Steve going to teach any class asking for a friend? <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll be barbecuechamps.com is where he'll be referring you to. <laughs> yeah. Pay for it like he did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. All right, so this came up. Uh, sh- uh, Sean asked Steve about his custom-made cooker. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we got we can take care of that. Let's take yep. a look at your custom-made cooker. I actually had that pulled up yep. uh, over here, and hopefully we don't get locked up like we did earlier. So, custom-made cooker. I see that here. We put a lot of work in this offset. A big part of that was... Taking a class from uh, Barbecue Champ Academy, Corey Mikes, and Fat Boys Barbecue. The results yesterday was awesome. High scores for our, us ever in chicken ribs. And overall, we dismiss uh, with a first-place chicken, first-place rib, and first-place overall grand champion. We weren't sure uh, what to expect uh, being off for eight months, but we couldn't have been more happier. And I see your cooker here. Yes, and I was sir. asking, I was like, okay, what am I seeing here? Is this, I don't see no paint on it. And tell me what you got <laughs> going on there. So, yeah. So what that is, is it's, it's a cooker. It's built based off plans. A guy named Frank Cox puts out off uh, smokerplans.net. It, the original design is called a Franken cube. Mm-hmm. Well, I modified it a little bit. And uh, my buddies in the backyard commonly refer to it now as the D cube. <laughs> or, uh, and I, I gave her the name Bonnie. Okay. And, uh, what that is, is that is a 50 inches tall, 30 by 30 front, or, right, you know, back. length yep. of it, yep. yep, cube made out of 10 gauge steel. Wow. Thick. And okay. uh, she weighs about, I did the math, she weighs right around 600 pounds. Right. Uh, that's, I always tell people that's the problem when you give redneck steel and a welder, we're yeah, just going to start thing in, throwing. Worst thing in the world, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but I built her, it's essentially... An ugly drum. Right. And, and you can see I sort of had my homage to gateway style drums with, with the two dual stacks on the front. Uh, she's got a fan drive on the back. And um, she's got huge, again, 10 gauge baffle plates in the center of her. So instead of cooking like a can, she cooks more like a WSM, which actually works really good for me because I spend a lot of time for, in the comp world running Smoky Mountains. Right. So it's. But the whole idea behind building this cooker was I wanted to build a cooker big enough that when I did decide it was time to go pro, I didn't have to get another cooker. You know, I didn't have to upgrade to a Jambo or anything. I can run my D-Cube, and actually this past weekend we ran pork on it. So, you know, I I know that I can fit all four meats on there and just roll with it and not affect my time. There's enough room in there to move enough air to still cook everything right, still get the right colors. And man, she's just, she's a lot of fun. Now she's, you could tell that two old boys with a welder built her in a garage because right. the parts where we deviated from the original plans after we did it, I'm like, Hmm, I see why Frank had that plan drawn up like that. But you know, it's, it's ours. It's got us on it. We left it. We, we, uh, we took a flapper disc and we took all that mill scale off of it. So it was nice right. and shiny. Right. We hit it with high temp clear coat because I wanted to just look raw, be a road warrior. Right. That's what this thing was. Is, is this thing is 
if you drop this thing off the truck, man, it's not going to hurt it. It's going to hurt the ground. So, it's the, the D cube. The D cube. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what's uh, what's Bonnie's full name? Uh, Bonnie's full name is Bonnie McMurray. Bonnie McMurray. <laughs> I always tell people when I, when I roll her out of the competition, I want people to look at her and go, Bonnie McMurray. Oh, that's funny. She's here. That's yep. funny. Well, I tell you what, it's 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 good to see um, stuff like this. It's so great to see somebody that was inspired by watching Barbecue Pitmasters. You had the roots of you love cooking. Um, you enjoyed it. You had a passion for it. Barbecue Pitmasters inspired you. You you felt the need and the sense to go out and compete. And uh, to me, I think that's. That's that's what everybody loves, and yep. then and then let's talk real quick about your uh, your YouTube uh, yes. channel. Uh, we've got it scrolling across the bottom. Uh, if you would like to go, and I certainly would encourage you go to. Uh, it's called Cookout Coach. Uh, mm -hmm. Here is his YouTube channel. Uh, DQ'd uh, barbecue and barbecue yep. is with the Q. Yep. Uh, certainly go uh, go take a take a look at it. He does a lot of product reviews and this and that and does some mm -hmm. cooking and and uh, we certainly want to uh, help promote him. He's going to try to help promote us. So any chance we get, we're going to give him a shout out. And uh, look, you're sitting here. You ain't got nothing to do. You're probably watching this <laughs> thing and just scroll on over there and go click it and hit it, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> and um, I'm sure he would appreciate it and pick up a lot of little pro tips that he may have as mm -hmm. he does little odd and things as well. Um, for inspiring YouTubers, uh, do you have any um, you have any pointers, any tips? Okay. The the biggest thing I can tell anybody who's who's going to be getting into YouTube is whatever you're going to talk about. Make it something you're passionate about, you know, just like us here tonight. I could say here, we could do this for hours. Oh, yeah. I could just sit here and talk to you about barbecue. The other thing is, you know, let some of yourself into it. In the beginning, I was probably a little too sterile in my how to videos and whatnot. Uh, you know, let, let some of your personality flow into it. And then, Got to. you know, you're telling a story. I always go back to YouTube as instructional as some of my stuff may be at the end of the day. Folks are usually watching it for some entertainment. So, right. you know, if there's a story, as to, like I I profess all the time on my YouTube channel how much I love ribs. So, you know, tell them why you love ribs so much. It's right. Tell them what they mean to you. And, and you know, it's sort of give people a chance to form a relationship with you. you know, to be able to look and go, I like that guy because of this. You know, that storytelling aspect, don't overlook that. You know, if you've got a good story to tell, let the world hear it. That's right. That's right. You know, that's good pointers, uh, Steve. I know you have really grown your uh, your channel tenfold in the last few months. And, you know, that's a tribute to getting out and, and doing it right and and just consistently putting out some stuff. And, yep. you know, I hope one day that you come down here to Louisiana and we go over to Texas and go cook an IBCA competition. So That sounds a, like a lot of fun. Have a little fun. So, you know, that's the, that's the great thing. You know, it's, it's just so much fun to get out and to do these things. And um, I don't know. I'm, I, I think that, you know, YouTube has is, is got a lot of information out there. A lot of it may not be the greatest information, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, yep. you got to you got to kind of pick through it, and some of that stuff you get on YouTube for recipes and stuff. We've we've done had, we've got our success story, and um, you know, oh, uh, Larry Dwayne Anderson, and he he'd watched about every YouTube video there was, and he just never hardly walked, didn't do good. Took Corey Mike's class three days after we launched it, and the very next weekend had a second place rib and eighth place chicken. Finished third overall, picked up six hundred bucks, spent five ninety nine <laughs> for the class, and he was off to the races. Since then, he's done won two grand champions. I bet he's done one almost four thousand dollars in prize money, and I mean multiple top ten finishes. And he said, "I watched every YouTube video out there," and he mm -hmm. said, "It just was nothing out there that was like this." Yes, and, sir. Um, it it is a, a tribute to what these guys are doing. Not only that, if you guys like steak or you want to get into the SEA steak cookers, I don't know if we have any of those. But, man, I tell you what, our steak cookers have been phenomenal. Uh, John Lindsay, Terry Roan, the 2018 world champion, uh, Shauna Rapolo, Alan Newton. I mean, those guys are just some of the absolute best. And I don't know, I was talking to John the other day, and I think in the last three competitions he's had 
21 top 10 finishes in the last three competitions that have been cooked was using his classes and stake and his rubs and stuff. And, you know, that's a tribute to what these guys do. That's, that's the one thing that I'm so proud of that we lay it on the line and, uh, and they do that and it helps people from the backyard, um, the cooker like you all the way to the pros. So, yep. well, buddy, I see it's starting to get a little dark back there and a little, bit. Uh, little dark, but that's fine. It's been a great show. Uh, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, no more questions I have seen coming in. We certainly do want to uh, wrap everything up. I hope everybody will kind of continue to follow us. And we have got a YouTube channel as well on Barbecue Champs Academy. Uh, we are fixing to really start loading up a lot of content to that. I want to thank all of our partners once again, B Extreme uh, Barbecue, B&B Charcoal, Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop, uh, Crawford's Barbecue Pit Products, Lumberjack Charcoal, Texas Pepper Jelly, Gunner Wilhelm. Couldn't do it without all you guys. Arkissippi Smoke Live. I was hoping John Lindsay would be able to make it. I hadn't seen him pop in here tonight, but I'm sure he is pretty busy with a lot of stuff he's got going on. And be looking for Barbecue Champs Academy Q and Live. I'm letting you know we are fixing to start a new series as well. I'm going to be doing a lot of product reviews and putting together rubs and sauces uh, on certain proteins that we're going to be cooking and finding the best overall rub combination for that particular product that we're going to be cooking. I think it's going to be great. We're going to have our first barbecue cooking class. It's going to be Barbecue Champs Academy Q and Live. It's going to be on Friday at 6 o'clock. I hope everybody will join us. Uh, it'll be on. It will actually be a live stream on Facebook. So we're literally going to cook this stuff live, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We got three different camera angles that we're going to be bouncing around on. I hope everybody will join us once again Friday at six o'clock Central Time as we go Barbecue Champs Academy Q and Live. And we're going to cook up some amazing food. We're going to try to do it every Monday at 6 o'clock from that point on. But we just wanted to go ahead and get one in here for the end of the month. So if you get a chance, go over there and follow us. Uh, become a subscriber to Barbecue Champs Academy on YouTube. Um, and uh, we hope to uh, have a lot of fun with that. And um, I certainly do thank everybody for being here. A lot of people are giving us a lot of shout. Great show. Um, Travis, thank you, man, for being here. We hope that you'll go follow us on our Facebook as we do these at 7 o'clock Central and um, each uh, Tuesday night. And then don't forget to follow us on Barbecue Champs uh, Q and Live. It's going to be this Friday at 6 o'clock Central. Then we're going to try to do them on Mondays at 6 o'clock as long as we got good weather to be able to do it. Hope everybody's had a lot of fun. We certainly do appreciate it. We'll see you guys, Lord willing, next Tuesday at 7 o'clock Central. It's just about to get dark, Steve. We're just about to lose you. So yes, sir. it's been our hour. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We appreciate you being on. Have a lot of fun, everybody. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Smoke on, and we'll see you down the road.